Welcome into the CHGO White Sox podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook. Download the app today and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Welcome into Studio A of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago. I'm Sean Anderson, the host of the CHGO White Sox podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. You can follow the show on Twitter at CHGO underscore White Sox. With me today in studio is Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him on Twitter at ActorWall23. Steven, I am remiss. I know it's very late. We're starting late as well. Um, thank you for the people who hang on. With thank us. you thank very you. much. Supposed to start at 4, starting at 447. We are missing the cactus that is in Jake's office as well to represent Vinny Duber, who is out in Arizona. Our lovely, lovely CHGO White Sox beat writer arrived today. He is safely there, hanging out in Arizona. Canadian tuxedo in hand. Canadian tuxedo, John Prine in hand. Um, so if you are looking to get up-to-date info and uh, updates from Arizona, check out Vinny Duber on Twitter, at Vinny Duber. Um, I know Lance Lynn and Patrick Fuller are supposed to speak later, and I even think Rick Hahn again. So um, Vinny will have some... News and notes later on today as well. He has sent us Rick Hahn audio and video of both Rick Hahn speaking and Mike Clevenger speaking about the open investigation into Mike Clevenger, and we will get into that in just a sec. Herb, um, I don't know if you want to say anything, start it off. I, obviously, Rick Hahn and Mike Clevenger know more about this um, whole situation more than we do, so we're going to try to play as much of the pertinent information that we have been able to glean to you, but... Is there a, a tone you want to set here? Yeah, the White Sox are, I want to choose my words correctly. When I heard that Mike Clevenger was speaking today, I was like, that's so White Sox. He shouldn't have had a mic. He didn't do himself any favors today by speaking. Neither did Rick Hahn. But I will reserve the rest of my comments till after we hear the audio and see some of the video that we're going to have for you guys today. So, yes, I'm not happy with the White Sox. Haven't been happy with the White Sox for a long time, but especially after this was brought to light. Yeah, and I, I know I have seen some people today at least talk about losing faith in the fandom with something like this going on, and I, I completely understand. Feel free to voice all of your comments and thoughts and opinions in the chat. We are monitoring, watching the live chat, and when we go dark, we will uh, make sure we star some of these comments as well and uh, get the White Sox fans thought out uh, onto this podcast, but uh, we are here to serve you. Uh, Vinny is out there because the media is supposed to be that link between the White Sox or any sports team uh, to the fans, and Vinny does a fantastic job. Um, he has audio and video um, for Mike Clevenger. Uh, we had a little bit of issues uh, getting the Han video over just because it was like 36 minutes long, so it's a, a big video uh, to process. So we are a little bit off on the Han one, but we do have Mike Clevenger video. So we're going to start with the Rick Han comments, and then we're going to get into the Mike Clevenger comments. Anything else you want to add? Usually, pitchers and catchers, and most fandoms look to this day as a, a day where you're just happy that baseball's back. No matter what the team did in the offseason, hope springs eternal. As you said, Rick Hahn spent about 35 minutes speaking, and, Rick, and uh, Vinny said he spent about 25 minutes talking about Mike Clevenger. How does that make you feel? It makes you feel terrible. Like you're talking about something that is not baseball related. That's ridiculous. And it's on MLB and it's on the White Sox too for this day to happen. Usually, you know, we and Sean, you know, we're going to do the whole spring training thing today, but we were going to preview another player. But no, that stuff's all out the window. Happiness, if you're looking for it, and positivity from White Sox, it's not today. I'm going I'm to rip them big time. After we hear these clips. Yeah, we've, uh, we've let you guys wait long enough. Here's Rick Hahn on Mike Clevenger. Uh, he starts with his opening statements, so there's no really other way to throw it then. Here is Rick Hahn, general manager of the Chicago White Sox, speaking about Mike Clevenger's open investigation. It is up to, under the terms of the collectively bargained policy, uh, it is solely to discretion of the commissioner to discipline a player under investigation after the conclusion of an investigation. Uh, at this point, uh, the White Sox options are the same as they have been throughout this process when Mike joined us, and that is to uh, respect the process and the investigation and let it play out. That is the club's only option. Um, obviously, the uh, confidentiality element of the investigation is essential. 
uh, to the success and strength of the policy and one that we're going to uh, continue to respect. In, in, your, in your statement, uh, after the word came out, you said you were unaware at the time of the signing that, that uh, Mike was, was in this. Looking back, is there any way there, there could have been digging deeper in order to find out what was going on, especially since he was pitching with San Diego throughout all this? Sure. Uh, it's a very fair question. The question about the level of due diligence that we do. Uh, I will say that the confidentiality element to this policy is essential in order to protect not just players, but also those who feel aggrieved to give them the ability to come forward and express that there's an issue and to allow for an investigation to take place. Part of that confidentiality is that other clubs don't know about it. And there was no way for us to be aware of this incident without someone being in violation of that policy. And no one was, uh, which again, is part of the strength of the policy and it's how it operates effectively. From a due diligence standpoint, uh, we have had some success in past years. I've been, I've been here now, I've, this started my 23rd season. Uh, so I've been involved in a lot of background checks, a lot of evaluations of players' makeup from outside the organization. Uh, we have had success at times in the past taking calculated risks on players that had, let's say, immaturity issues with other organizations, bringing them in here and making them part of our environment and giving them a new opportunity to fulfill their potential. Uh, probably don't have that ring in 05 without taking chances like that. Uh, that said, you know, you try to do everything in your power to uncover everything you can and make a decision based upon the risk of what you're bringing in. Uh, and look, that's a big part of my job, big part of the front office's job is managing risk, whether it's from performance, health, clubhouse fit, off-field issues. It's a matter of putting that all in a box and making the best decision you can based on the information available to you at that time. Uh, there's been instances in the recent past where we've passed on people because of what we've uncovered in background. Uh, and there's always means for improving it. But in terms of finding out about this specific incident or anything, there was no indication of anything close to anything that has been alleged in this guy's background. So you felt it was a calculated risk. What was your reaction then when you heard the news? Disappointment. You never want... I, I, I'm... I'm I regret the fact that we're sitting here today talking about this. I understand why we're doing it. Obviously, we have to. Uh, but this is a year in which we have high expectations. We have uh, a new staff that's trying to hit the ground running to help us fulfill those expectations. And we've got a heck of a lot of players in that clubhouse right now who feel like they have something to prove. Uh, Frankly, that was part of the appeal in bringing Mike in prior to all this, of knowing that he, prior to all this, he had something to prove as well. Uh, here's a guy who historically has pitched when healthy, like a guy towards the front of a rotation. At this point in his career, due to injuries, uh, you know, he's not out there reaping the benefits financially of what a front end starter gets. And here's a guy who could come in and potentially with something to prove, a chip on his shoulder to to show he belongs to be treated like the elite pitcher he has shown himself capable of being. Uh, so we were excited to all get here and start building towards that collective goal, letting these guys sort of show that they're who people thought they were a year ago and regret the fact that this is instead the topic. If the investigation was public at, let's say, the beginning of offseason, would that have disqualified him from you guys signing? It's not the, it's, that's a hypothetical, not the facts that we're dealing with. Wait, sorry, just to clarify. Sure, sure. You, the, just this question of calculated risk, did you, if, if there was no indication that there was anything to be concerned about, was signing Clevenger a calculated risk, or did you actually think this was like a pretty good... 
Well, no, we, it was a calculated risk because of some of the maturity issues that had come to light historically and that were uncovered as part of our uh, our background. Okay. Look, Trees there was no, general, there's no, so. yeah, yeah, nothing to do with this incident whatsoever. The, the public, it was very public what happened back in 2020. They were playing us in our place when they had the, the COVID protocol breach that he was part of. Uh, as you probably recall, there he was uh, available and ultimately moved to San Diego at that deadline, and we were part of that those conversations with Cleveland at the time about acquiring him. We had uh, several conversations at that time about his, you know, what are, what are we getting here from a makeup standpoint? Uh, you know, there certainly were some positives in terms of work ethic and focus and desire to win and desire to compete and understanding of his own mechanics and efforts to improve, which were positives. But there were, you know, maturity questions, and he'd admit that probably by his, by his own volition. So that's that's what I was referring to in terms of we've had similar guys who have had reputational uh, questions, let's say, because of their behavior in other places before they got to us. Do you plan to change anything about the due diligence you perform on players in the future? I think, look, we have to. Any anything that we're not exactly clicking at a hundred percent on. We look for ways to improve. This past offseason, we made alterations to our sports performance department because of some issues we felt we had. Uh, same would be with analytics or scouting or whatever, if we're an area where we can get better. Uh, we've talked about ways to improve our, our background interviews, so to speak, some questions perhaps that would lead to other paths that we weren't asked. Uh, but again, I think it needs to be clear, under the terms of this policy, there was no way for us to have known this information about a, an open investigation dating back to middle of last year. Right. You, Your job would then be to find out about the incident at due diligence, not necessarily the investigation, right? Like if we could. If we could, not yeah. Not necessarily the existence of an investigation that's confidential, but to the source of the investigation. Uh, if we had, ideally, if we had found that out, that would have been informative. Rick, you said your uh, your reaction was disappointment, disappointment that you're talking about this. Have you had much discussion with his teammates, with other members of the process, with Jerry even, about what, what the reaction was from them over? Yeah. Yeah, we've talked about it. Talked about one-on-one with players, coaches, Jerry, Kenny, everyone. Absolutely. White Sox fans I've had conversations with directly as well. Um, you know, I left this out earlier inadvertently. Mike addressed the team personally in there this morning and express to them his uh, regret that this is potentially in, in any way a distraction or the fact that, you know, any of them may potentially need to answer questions about him. And I think that was a good first day move by him, step by him to try to build some relationships and, and you know, express his level of regret for the situation. That you haven't um, added any more since all this came out to the potentially to uh, fill in the rotation. Is that an indication of your, your confidence perhaps maybe that uh, he's going to be able to pitch for you this year? We are always on the lookout for more pitching. I'm guessing all 30 GMs sitting down today are talking about the fact that they feel like they don't have enough pitching and uh, if there's the opportunity to, to add, we will. I mean, look, we going back to this time last year, you know, Johnny Cueto wasn't part of the organization. Uh, Elvis Andres obviously wasn't part of the organization at this time last year. In 21, we didn't have Goodwin, Hamilton, Jake Lamb, all guys who contributed to a division winner two years ago. None of those guys were in camp with us. So the search to continue to add and get better doesn't doesn't end just because it's the first day of camp. But does that omnipresent desire or need for, for more starting pitching or more pitching in general become greater with this situation in any way? I think it's the... It's great this time of year, regardless. It just is. You know, I can get a call from James Crock while I'm sitting here right now because of an unexpected thing. The, the the biggest injury risks are always right at the start of camp and then at the start of the season, just statistically. Uh, so I think we always feel the the strong desire to add. Can you speak to what a background check process generally consists of, or at least to enhance understanding of why such a thing may not come up as part of? Well, it wouldn't come up because it was. Like, confidential investigation what, I think is the main the reason uh, you wind up depending on who the player is and who your connections are with that player's past talking with everyone from uh, 
former teammates, former coaches, scouts, people in the traveling party, people in, who've worked in visiting clubhouses. Uh, if you know people they've worked with in the off season, you know the people who are with them in the minors. Uh, obviously, there's can be consultation uh, with league agent to find out any past issues that may be available publicly. Uh, there's also a, a sort of more formal process that you go through in terms of uh, in certain instances police activity or anything along those lines that is discoverable. You the spoke it. Doesn't have to say anything. You spoke to the agents are not under an obligation to share that. It's confidential. Should he? Have, he should he? Have, it's not a question for me. Do you do you believe Clevenger? He said he's innocent. I'm not the judge or jury in this situation. When Clevenger addressed the team this morning, did he, you said he apologized for being a distraction for their having to answer questions about him. Did he address the incident, the underlying incident at all? Uh, the underlying incident? No. Are you frustrated with Mike for putting you in this position? Like, the agent could have told you, but the player could have told you too. Independent of whether the allegations are true, the player could have told you he was under investigation and you could have made a decision that way. Uh, it's a distraction now, it's because you didn't know question is... Are you frustrated with him for, for putting you in this position? I understand why he didn't. That was Rick Hahn speaking about the open investigation into Mike Clevenger. We will have Clevenger's thoughts as well. Um, again, we are not totally surprised by the tone that Rick Hahn is taking. Uh, once the first report was made we reached out to an MLB agent and she said it is within line of the MLB and the MLBPA for agents and players not to discuss that in the MLB not to let teams know about open investigations due to confidentiality and Rick Hahn spoke about that there are a couple of points that I contend with a couple of points that I'm not entirely sure with um, I would say that one, it does sound, especially when Rick Hahn was asked about the agent not bringing up the open investigation and then Clevenger himself, I think those long pauses show at least some frustration uh, from Rick Hahn with this current situation. Um, but even then, uh, there was a great question, I think, in there from Scott Greger talking about, well, since you haven't addressed the current pitchers, um, are you kind of banking on Clevenger being here? Uh, Rick didn't really say that and he you know talked about Billy Hamilton Jake Lamb being late additions to the spring team but again what you're telling me and Mike's going to say something too that I feel like goes along with this lines if you're allowing this person to speak and you're giving 25 of the 36 minutes of your time today to open up spring training on this not only is this not a distraction but it was a mistake I, I mean it's it's just an utter utter embarrassment watching this happen and, and hearing him speak and talk about this. Um, there's not enough information. This man shouldn't be in camp right now and he shouldn't be speaking to the media. And honestly, Clevenger's comments are more embarrassing than Hans. Um, Han stayed, I feel pretty tight lipped. Um, there wasn't a lot to, I think, learn from that, but what did you gain? As Jackie pointed out, um, I took away the Stephanie Epstein question. She asked Rick Hahn if he's frustrated with, that was that last question you heard. If he's frustrated with Mike Clevenger, put him in the White Sox in this position by not disclosing when he signed that he was under investigation for allegations of domestic violence. Hahn thought about it for a while and said, I understand why he did. That is the most frustrating answer you can ever give about that. He is rubber stamping, lying by omission. As I came in here when the news broke with Sean and Vinny, I, would, I said they should cut him if they found out that he didn't tell them that he was under investigation at the time of signing. And I know people are saying, why would he tell them that? He wouldn't have a job. Exactly. Me and Steven were talking, our producer Steven's like, if I'm innocent of something and I have a deal on the line, I'm going to let my employer know, hey, man. There's this person I think is making up falsehoods about me. I have an investigation with Major League Baseball. You should know that because I don't want any surprises later on when you find out about it a month from now. That is the bad part that I feel about Rick Hahn and the White Sox in general. They are just so frustrating. They 
didn't have to set the market for Mike Clevenger. They went out and got him one of the first free agent signings before the winter meetings was Mike Clevenger. As if he's some damn Cy Young Award winning pitcher coming off a four and a half ERA season in San Diego and that piss poor performance in the playoffs. So I just don't understand any of the stuff that they did today. And I told you guys the other day what I would say if I was the White Sox. MLB has an investigation with Mike Clevenger right now. It is under their jurisdiction. We have no further comment. It, but instead, 26 or 35 minutes spent talking about this goddamn distraction that is not going to help your team at all, starting the tempo of the damn spring training right now with this garbage. We're talking about this. Me and you are talking about this right now. We're all thinking about it. And as Cody Del Mendo, who's a CHGO Cubs, he brought up, even if you don't feel like he's, he, like he needs his day in court or he needs his you know, innocent to proven guilty, is the player worth it? No. This player's not worth it. At best, he's a middle-of-the-rotation starter. At best. When's the last time he's been a top-of-the-rotation starter? 2018? Yeah, I... Like, this is garbage. I don't like making that point just because, I mean, even if this was literally Shohei Otani, if, if he was accused of the same things, I would not want that player on my Understood. team. So I, I don't really give a shit about how fucking talented he is. No, no, right? no. I'm saying, no, like, I know, but I, baseball teams I can make that. those excuses and say it's a baseball move. And, yes, most of us would hate it, but then some would understand, like, okay, I get it, but also I hate it. I so it's a bad, bad, bad thing that the White Sox are doing right now, and I know that they're like, "Your hands are tied," but why do you speak for twenty six minutes if your hands are goddamn tied? Well, he just said a bunch of garbage gook that didn't help the situation at all, and you'll hear from Mike Clemenger in a second. He didn't help his situation no. at all either. This well, team just can't get out of its own goddamn way. And Daniel, what you said is uh, they should drop Clevenger, keep the $10 million, and, and that's the issue that they're facing right now. That is why Rick Hahn is currently waiting for the MLB to finish and conclude their investigation. If he is placed on administrative leave, which is in the MLB's hands, um, then it is possible for the White Sox to get out of some of the contract that they guaranteed him, the $12 million. Right now, if they let him go, there will likely be a, a, a clause uh, open up or a, a whatever a, a suit opened up by the MLB Players Association for unlawful you know termination and you um, heard in that clip that they can't do any punishment and paying him off would be seen by his lawyers I'm sure and MLBPA as a punishment and also maybe subject to them to further litigation for future earnings of Mike Clemenger because as you see right now Trevor Bauer is able to sign with any major league baseball team for the league minimum, no one's touching him. So if the White Sox were to DFA him and pay him his money, I would say they would have a strong case for maybe some future earnings and not be able to pitch in Major League Baseball anymore. Because if you are accused of this and the White Sox believe this credible accusation and DFA you, I would say that he and his lawyers would have a better chance of uh, suing the White Sox. So I'm sure that they're holding their water on anything like that. I'm sure they don't even like the situation, but they didn't do themselves any favors today by speaking. If they had a person that was in public relations doing their job, they wouldn't have Rick Hahn right. speak as long as he did and never, ever, ever, ever having Mike Clevenger speak, ever. I don't understand, like, if you want to think he's innocent, if you want to think he's guilty, that's not what I'm trying to c convince you of or anything. That's not what we're doing here today. Rick Hahn spoke, Mike Clevenger spoke. Um, and Sean's saying, I literally know it's their job, but I think the media should drop the questions on this stuff because of how pathetic the responses have been. Again, it doesn't feel like with a situation as important and touchy and, I mean, there's a child involved, like, there shouldn't be a rush to speak. If Mike Clevenger wants to run his mouth on his own social media, he should. Yeah, The fact that he is speaking in a White Sox hat and White Sox garb at White Sox spring training camp where you walk up and you see all the World Series coming out and the huge logo on the front of the building, like that is a stupid look. From a public relations standpoint, it is idiotic. If Olivia Feinstead, the other person in this part, wants to go on her social media and talk or be on 670 The Score and talk about her experience, that is her right. Absolutely. But like that is six seven score or Olivia Feinstead choosing to do those things. The White Sox chose to have their media relationship, media relations people 
buy Mike Clevenger and have him speak in the same spot that Rick Hahn spoke. I thought that was a complete mistake, and I, I don't understand it. Um, I think we have to talk a little bit about Mike Clevenger, and we have to go to Mike Clevenger now. Um, Rick Hahn did mention, and the Stephanie Epstein question, uh, you know, are, are you frustrated with Mike for not telling you about this situation? Mike does talk about uh, the investigation, the length of the investigation, his knowledge of the investigation. Um, let's go to Clevenger and, and, and form, uh, f- you know, final thoughts or, or, or more thoughts on this. So here is Mike Clevenger addressing uh, the open investigation. I want to start off by saying I'm excited to be here, excited for the opportunity to be with the White Sox. This was the place that I, you know, chose, wanted to be at, and uh, pretty disappointed. We have to start off this way. I mean, this is pretty devastating to me and my family, and I know I feel terrible for my teammates having to answer questions for you. I asked them a bunch of questions about this. Um, I, I trust the process in MLB, I really do. And I think there's a reason I'm sitting here in front of you today, and I'm uh, just asking everyone to wait before they rush to judgment. So wait till the, the actual facts are out there. Wait till there's actual evidence, and then make your decision on who you think I am. But I'll just really appreciate just a, a little bit of, you know, just, just wait for there's, there to be actual evidence where you start making judgments and stuff. This is about my children that I care more about than even this game. Considering Dan all the... Miller from ABC7, how have you managed your emotions knowing that you're having to do all this as you prepare for a season? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult, but I mean, it's, uh, again, it's my job. It's, uh, I'm sure you have bad days and you still have to come sit here in front of me and ask me questions, so it's the same thing. Uh, I mentioned that you addressed the team uh, mm-hmm. this morning. Uh, what, share what you said. And, and, and um, I just kind of, uh, I'm going to keep it in the clubhouse, talking in the clubhouse, but it was, I just want to share my sentiment to them that I, how bad I felt that this was how I was starting out. This is how they were meeting me for a lot of these guys that don't know me. And I didn't want their first day at camp to be asked, answering questions about this nonsense. Jesse, Jesse Rogers with ESPN. Are, are, are you confident you'll be fully exonerated? I'm confident. I am. Your, a- any idea on a timeline from, from I anyone? I have no idea. Okay. Yep. Dylan Hernandez of the LA Times. Here. Um, were you offered an opportunity to either stay home or go on administrative leave? And if so, did you consider that at all? No, that wasn't even a thing. That was never. A that didn't even come up in that. No. Uh, do you, you know, when you were talking to the White Sox, did you consider at all disclosing to them that you were under investigation? Uh, this was going on for seven months. I didn't even know it was still it was still going on. To be honest, you thought the investigation was over. I'm, I'm gonna leave it. To, if you have more questions about baseball, I gotta I gotta leave. I mean, I'm I'm advised by MLB and my lawyers to wait till the investigation's over before I keep going on about I know, the details. But, but when you said that you thought it was over, why did you think it was over? If there was no because there was no. Uh, I'm gonna wait. I'll wait. I'll, I'll I'll be able to talk about this in a, a sooner uh, in the future date. I just can't. I can't talk about it right now. I'm just not. I'm not allowed to. Mm-hmm. You're, you're here to play baseball. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's just mentality. It's just. It's you know. I gotta do it for. I gotta do it for my family. I gotta do it for me. I gotta do it for this team. I mean, uh, you know, they made. A, I made a promise to them. They made a promise to me to. You know, they're supporting me. They're, so I'm gonna be here for this team, be here with these guys, and you know, the fan base, and you know, do this for my family. Like uh, James Segan from the Athletic, just what was kind of your reaction initially when you first heard of the allegations? Was it surprising? Was it? Shocking, how do you kind of respond to it? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna wait for these till later. I mean, we got baseball questions, I'm more than happy to talk about my mechanical changes I made in the offseason to get back to where I'm at. Any, any of these questions, I'm about, but I gotta wait for these, these uh, anything else about this investigation. Steve Greenberg from the Sun Times, it's, it's not a baseball question. Do you, do you, do you feel like you have anything things that you have to work on uh, in regard to your behavior? Uh, I mean, I would, I would say all of it. It's, a, it's all, all a growing game. I would say if anyone looks at themselves and don't think they can do better tomorrow, then they're not, they're not being honest with themselves. Your uh, lawyer, among other comments, said the words that you did nothing wrong. Is that your position that you did nothing wrong? That is. That is. Rick Hahn said that you did look into your background. That you thought that there might be some maturity issues in your past. Do you, do you agree with that? Oh, when I was like 20, 21, when I first got into pro ball, I'd, I'd say so. Yeah, definitely. I think I, I, yeah, I would say when I was a younger, 
<laughs> man jumping into the pro balls, a little bit immature for sure. I, I think he might have mentioned the inside of Chicago. The, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's been mistakes. Yeah, uh, there's been mistakes in my past. Correct. Micah, you kind of mentioned wanting people to wait for the conclusion of the investigation and have impression on you. Is there kind of, I guess, a message, especially with you being a new team, new city, new fan base, is there kind of a message you're trying to you know, give to the people who don't know you and maybe only know this about you that you're trying to? Yeah, just w w wait for the actual the actual facts and wait wait to see what the, the decision, decision is. Mike wants you to wait for the actual facts, but as Mike said, his MLB, the MLB and his lawyers told him not to discuss the details of the investigation. So once again, the man in the Chicago White Sox hoodie, why are you speaking? I don't give a shit about your mechanics and how you've changed them. I don't give a shit about your knee and all the quarterzoin shots. There's one reason why we're talking about Mike Clevenger today. There's one reason why Mike Clevenger is the headline of the first day of spring training. It's not because he's innocent or guilty or whatever. We don't know. We don't have enough information, and neither does Mike Clevenger, and that's why he can't speak. This was so stupid. I could not agree more. He was on there, um, we got baseball questions. No one's there to ask you goddamn baseball nope. questions. Not one person's there to ask you baseball questions. And I applaud Sox beat right there with uh, Steve Greenberg uh, taking the lead at the end, pretty much telling him, like, yeah, you've been immature. Don't act like you're above it all. Come on now. I'm putting words into uh, Steve uh, Greenberg's mouth, but that's the gist I got of it. He seems frustrated by the questions that are going to be asked to him. What the do you think was going to happen today? Hey, Mike, how about the White Sox? How about pitching, uh, being the fifth starter for the White Sox? Man, it's good to have you here in Arizona. What the hell? And also, like, how do you know about this goddamn investigation and not tell a soul, not tell the White Sox? That still frustrates me to hell. So from that, even if he's, even if at the end of this, MLB says, you're good to go, man. We, we believe you over Olivia. You're good to play. I would cut him the next day. I would cut him because he didn't tell me that. Because he let me in to this embarrassing situation. Like, what out of this did the White Sox and or Mike Clevenger think they were going to get? All they're getting is bad press. And people, like you guys who are watching and guys who are listening right now on the podcast, are probably not going to be buying season tickets. Season tickets are down this year. Didn't have Sox Fest this year. It's just one bad thing after another this offseason. The only positivity was the Andrew Benatendi sign. That was such a long time ago. Like, I don't understand why the White Sox are so bad at their jobs and why they let this man talk today. If he wasn't going to say anything of substance or say anything that clears him. So it's just bad after bad. And I just am so frustrated. And if you're a White Sox fan, I know you're beyond frustrated because you know you're going to be going to the games this year. You know you want to enjoy baseball, but you hate how this team operates from time to time. It's just so bad and I know it starts from the top with the man Jerry Reinsdorf something has to change because it's so frustrating to cover this team on a day-to-day -day basis and days like this my blood gets up I don't need my blood to get up I don't <laughs> need my blood pressure to be going up I'm a 44 year old man I don't have much time left on this earth probably like 40 more years if I'm lucky well, I don't need the White Sox to be taking one of those away yeah no we, no they don't we, 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 we want you around as, as long as possible Dicks. um Again, uh, this is not about whether he is innocent or guilty. Mm -hmm. It just makes no sense why he spoke today. Um, I, I, I just don't understand. SC in the chat is asking what the investigation is about. Um, seems like we may need to reset. Uh, just, you know, we heard Rick Hahn speak. We heard Mike Clevenger uh, speak. We'll take a quick ad break, and then we will reset and uh, rejoin this discussion and kind of just tell you where we're at with all of this with the Mike Clevenger investigation. We've got to let you know about Green Ridge Farm. They are a local product, a Chicago local meat and cheese company offering you a better all-natural option. They're the makers of all-natural deli meat, sausage, and their famous meat sticks. They're perfect for, perfect for tailgating, happy hour, and school lunches. And these perfect all-natural meat sticks are hardwood smoked for eight hours. And with 16 grams of protein per stick, they make a wonderful post-workout snack. Meat sticks come in chicken, black forest beef, and flavors like jalapeno cheddar and spicy chili. If you haven't tried them yet, you don't know what you're missing out on. They're delicious because 
because they are made from recipes generations in the making. And being all natural, they deliver a fresh and flavorful alternative snack time. You can find them in the refrigerated section at Costco, Sam's Club, or in your local Chicagoland grocery store. And right now, when you order any three meat products at GreenRidgeFarm.com and include a pack of meat sticks in your cart, those meat sticks will be free simply by using code CHGO at checkout. Green Ridge Farm, simply natural meat. Also have to let you know about FOCO. Chicago, you already have the best coverage for your favorite teams, so get fitted in the best sports gear around. FOCO has you covered from Soldier Field to the front room, north or south side, with hoodies, slippers, signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between. Get decked out like DeMar with apparel from the leaders in sports merchant collectibles. FOCO, if you're looking for the perfect gift for the football fan in your life, FOCO's got you covered with hoodies to fight that Lake Michigan breeze. So check out FOCO.com or click the link in the description below. That's at FOCO.com, F-O-C-O.com. And for all, for, and for all non-presale items, use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. Okay, so... I believe it was late January, The Athletic released uh, that the investigation was open into Mike Clevenger uh, due to reports that he uh, physically abused his ex, Olivia Feinstead. Uh, on June 23rd, there is a reported incident where he strangled her. Um, there is not only Instagram stories where she talks about this in detail, but last night on Valentine's Day, there was also an hour-long uh, video that she posted to her Instagram feed where she talks about some of those instances as well. Again, she has her side of the story. Mike Clevenger has a side of the story. I'm not an MLB investigator. I'm not telling you which side is right. I just think that, you know, again, we, we see so many people saying, and it's really only people saying he's, you know, proven until innocent. Um, just it's I, not a court I, of law. It's not a court of law. I'm, I'm a baseball all. podcaster. Um, yeah. I, I just I just want to be fair to, to everyone on the side. Um, but with uh, Mike Clevenger, uh, Washington Post also reported that on June 23rd, uh, there was a police report filed. Um, they, one of the reporters found the police report back from June. Um, and the big thing is the reason why Clevenger might have not known why it was going on was Olivia herself said that she wasn't the one that went to MLB or the police about this. She wasn't trying to go after him. And then um, in September and October, she started reaching out and talking to them. Um, and the reason why she said is because Mike Clevenger was trying to take custody of her child and take away um, insurances. Um, and right now she's currently talking about, you know, having to pay out of pocket for certain needs that this child has um, medically. And she is just looking for support from her child, uh, from her father. Um, and that is a form of child abuse. There's also a reported um, incident where he spat tobacco on his, his child. Again, all reported, all alleged. Um, but that is where we're at. And that is why Mike Clevenger says he thinks he'll be exonerated. Um, and that's why Olivia Feinstead is promoting her story because she wants to tell her truth and nothing but her truth. Because, again, we all have our own sides of the story. Yeah, and I think that... No matter which side you were on and shouldn't be sides, we know that yeah. domestic abuse and child abuse is wrong. If we go with that, I mean, just the fact that he's being accused of this and has been accused of this by previous girlfriends through Olivia, of course, but so we don't know. Accused is the big word there. The White Sox should have been, had better due diligence. If this reporter can find out this information from a FOIA Act, Freedom of Information Act, then the White Sox should have that information. Should be doing this stuff if they think, and Rick Hahn spoke before this, and we heard him talk about taking a calculated risk on this guy because they took it a calculated risk back in 2005, and look how that worked out. Again, I always say it, process over results. You don't do things just because it worked out in the past, just because the results are favorable. That's how we end up with Tony La Russa. That's how we end up with bad results all the time with this team because they think, oh, man, we did this in 2005 and it worked out. Why don't we do it in 2023? 17 years later, who cares? But this is the problem with the White Sox. They don't think logically. They don't think about the, the grand scheme of what's going on. Like Mike Clevenger, they knew he was a person because he – a person that was, had maturity problems because he left at COVID when there were protocols in mm -hmm. place. And Rick Hahn admitted on that tape that he still tried to get him at the trade deadline when San Diego got him. That, to me, is irresponsible. And, and they should be doing better due diligence. And even if you believe that the White Sox didn't know about this, they should have better people, better investigators, especially for him, him especially, say, okay, I've heard things. Because I had heard things, not to this point, but I had heard things. 
as a person that is not connected to anybody, if I heard things, you should have heard things. You should have been doing better due diligence. So uh, yesterday I said the White Sox should be absolved or it's more MLB thing. Today I'm feeling it's MLB and the White Sox both are at fault because she started talking in October. If you give her that, it's been four months. What's taking so long? You either believe or you don't. So well, either you either say, hey, you're good, Mike, or you say, Mike, you're going to be spending four, I, I, four months is plenty I, I, of time to investigate I, something. I, 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 mm-hmm, let's slow down there. I mean, it let's, is. Let, let them gather all the in, information they need. I don't want them to rush to a decision. Just rush is four damn, damn months. I, four months. Again, I, again, like, so what I, I understand. I understand. I'm not I'm I, I just like with the Trevor Bauer thing. Um, I just want to set a timeline for people to know like what happened with that um so on it was june 28th there was a um restraining order filed by the woman um who alleged that trevor uh bauer and uh, trigger warning for everybody who doesn't want to hear about this um for sexually assaulting her um and and for beating her and then it took mlb i think about four days to place him on administrative leave that was while the season was going on and he was scheduled to pitch again Right now, I feel like the MLB doesn't have to do anything until opening day until he starts making starts that are counting towards his contract. I understand your frustration. I feel this frustration. People talked, uh, Jackie, in the chat today, um, does wonderful work at Southside Sox, was on uh, Beef Loaf's Aju um, from the 108. Um, definitely go check it out. But she was talking about her fandom and how this is affecting her fandom and how it's making her feel. And going back to 2016, um, after the Blackhawks win their third cup, um, Patrick Kane was uh, alleged of uh, rape in, a, in, a, in Buffalo. Um, and there was a very odd just way that that played out. There was a way that the rape kit turned up at the woman's house, her own rape kit. And like there's a lot of different factors that led to you know, Patrick Kane being exonerated um, and, and being found not guilty. Um, and as Melissa said, like, even if someone's found not guilty, that doesn't mean that, you know, the system is perfect. And it doesn't mean they're innocent. Exactly. A lot of people in Chicago have led to be okay with Patrick Kane playing for the Blackhawks and continuing his career. That's fine. Again, there is nothing in a court of law that says he is guilty of what happened. But as a person, just seeing all of the information and what happened and stuff, like I just never felt good about watching hockey. Hockey was one of my favorite sports, and that led me to stop watching hockey. So this is just a very delicate situation. That's all I'm saying. I'm not an investigator. I don't know enough information. When stuff gets leaked out or when stuff gets put out that isn't true or could lead people either way, like it, it, it could you know, sway public opinion. It could hurt someone's case. Like right now, it just doesn't seem like it's a, 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 a clean investigation. I don't know. Like it just, a lot of it's odd. And the one thing too, like you talked about the White Sox interested in Clevenger after the COVID situation, he was asked about that, um, asked about the immaturity. And he said, what, when I'm 20, 21? And it's like, no, you clown. Like you are 32 years old. You were 29 when you were kicked off the Cleveland team for being out on the town during COVID. Like this guy doesn't even have an understanding of what he's done in his life. And like I, I, that frustrates me. So like, I, again, I don't have enough information, but the way that he addressed today, it's just like, Again, I, I, I am just so baffled that they let him speak in a White Sox hoodie today. Like I, I, and I, I get your frustration then with the MLB not closing up this, this investigation. But again, I, I want them to make the right call. I don't want to have it black and gray and then me for the next 162 games be like, oh, well, should I be even rooting for this team? Can I actually give my all to this team because they might be knowing, willingly signing somebody who did this to a child and, and their ex? I don't know enough information. That's not my job. And for fans, that is so much of you to ask, um, uh, to, to, you know, decipher. Like, again, that's not any of our jobs. All of you in the chat just want to watch baseball. All of you in the chat want to enjoy your White Sox experience. And this is the darkest of clouds over spring training. And they didn't have to have this. They didn't have to have this at all. And so Again, they jumped the market. And, yeah, they jumped the market like they did with Adam Eaton. Now, I'm not saying they're the same type of player, but they do the same type of things of jumping the market for a player that's not worth it, that no one else is checking for. Why give $12 million to Mike Clevenger at any time? Now, if it's February, you need a fifth starter, Mike Clevenger's available, let's go and see what's going down. But it's at the end of November before, in December that you're going out and signing Mike Clevenger. 
that's a big problem with me. I didn't like the move at the initial. Then we saw, talked to my guy, uh, Stephen Woods, out there in San Diego, said and he was all right. He was a model citizen, and I believe him. For the media, he probably puts on a good face and probably looks like a good dude. But we don't know what these guys do when they go home. And I don't want the team that I happen to root for having people who are accused of doing this. And if he did do this, I don't want him at close to the White Sox. On his starts, if he does play, pitch for the White Sox, I'll be looking the other way. I'll be reporting on what the game is, but never having the pom-poms out for Mike Clevenger. I'll tell you, hey, man, he went out and did what he wanted to do. He had a good job, and he won the game, and the White Sox won. I will not be happy when Mike Clevenger takes the bump for the White Sox, and I believe that's happening. You see he's already in, in camp, and they're letting him speak. You wouldn't let this guy speak if you didn't think that this man's going to be pitching for you this year. They're not a smart organization, so maybe they didn't think that through. But I believe Mike Clevenger is going to be pitching for the White Sox, and I'm going to be with, looking at this with a jaundiced side the whole goddamn time, the whole time, because his – I'm just so, so frustrated with the White Sox and how they do business, and they can't is, continue is, to do this and get away with it. And, and it's just so unfair to people who are White Sox fans who've been supporting this team. I've been supporting this team since 1990. And I'm frustrated by beyond beyond be, p- repair, and that's why I have a second team. That's why I love the Padres. That's why I'll look at other teams and say, you know what, the White Sox don't win, they don't win. But I'll be doing my job here at uh, CHO White Sox before and after the game to tell you what I feel as a as a fan and a person that has a podcast. Now, Vinny will be more on the media side, and he'll give you the straight dope. That's why we're here. We're more of the fan part. Sean's the host. I'm the fan. Vinny is the journalist. So that's why we are, our dynamic is that what it is. And so I'm sorry if you feel like I should be having gray and white pom-poms for this man. I won't. I will not. Well, it doesn't matter. Real quick, David's, He's out David's asking uh, what happened to the presumption of innocence. What, why? That's not, I'm not what a lawyer. It is. It's just not a lawyer, like, David. Again, yeah. What, I'm an opinionista. Um, My opinion is he's a piece of trash. This is from Julie Brady. The White Sox and MLB are not bound to by the rules of criminal procedure. There is no presumption of innocence in a non-legal matter for someone who works for a private company. And you are stupid if you are tweeting what happened to innocent and to prove it guilty. I see that some people are mad about the previous tweet, which is a statement of fact. I'm very, very sorry about the rules of criminal procedure and to whom they apply. I should not have written them like that. Like, again, like, I, again, why do I have to presume he's innocent? Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know any of the details. People, we're not investigators. Like, I, I don't have to presume shit. I, I don't, I'm not taking either side here. So, David, if you want to believe he's fucking innocent, believe he's innocent. If you want to believe he's guilty, believe he's guilty. You're a person who doesn't have control over the investigation. MLB and the White Sox do. Clevenger shouldn't have spoken today, period. Not one word. And it's bad on the White Sox for doing this. I don't care what happens. The White Sox have messed up multiple times on this front. And even if Clevenger's like, I want to get out and clear my name. He didn't. There should be multiple people. Yeah. Scott Reifert, media relations guy, say no. Rick Hahn, the GM, saying no. Pedro Gafal, the manager, saying no. A lot of people. Kenny Williams saying no, you're not speaking. We're shutting that shit down. But if they encouraged him and asked him to speak this, that's even more. This is a, this is a boondoggle of a situation the White Sox did. Guess what's going to be asked tomorrow to Yasmani Grandal? What's going to be asked tonight to Lance Slim? What's going to be asked today to Pedro Gafal? This is going to be top story the whole goddamn spring training because of the White Sox doing this. Herb, can you play a little, uh, play a little game here? Uh, act like I'm uh, walking into uh, my job for the first time. Okay. All right, Sean's over there. He's about to go outside and do some walking in. Let's see. Hey. Hey. Hey, nice to meet you. Hey, new guy. Sean. What's your name? Sean um, Herb? Yeah, Sean Anderson. Hey, I'm really sorry about all the distraction that's going to be coming in. Um, there's an open investigation about me um, abusing uh, one of my exes. You know, uh, I'm really sorry to cause it. A, like, why? 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 Get the why? fuck out of my locker just, room. Yeah, like, what? What? Like, hey, person I just met today. Oh, you're now telling me about this open investigation. Why are you here? Yeah. Why me as a baseball player? Why do I have to listen about this? You're not a distraction. Guess what? I don't know you. And this is the first thing that you're bringing into my life. Yeah. The first thing that you're putting onto my plate. It doesn't matter if he's innocent or guilty. It's what's fact. Right now, what is fact is we have 36 minutes of Rick Hahn talking about Mike Clevenger. We have eight minutes of Mike Clevenger saying, I'm not allowed to say anything. But then why the fuck are you talking? And then also, like I said with Addison Russell back at the time, it's not just about Addison Russell. And you brought up a good point. It's 
Chris Bryant getting asked. It's other players. Derek, uh, uh, let's see, Anthony Rizzo getting asked. Now it's Tim Anderson getting asked. It's all the rest of the players getting asked about Mike Clevenger. He's an instant distraction to the players in the locker rooms and their wives asking. You don't think these wives of the players are like, man, you got a guy who's accused of all that stuff? And that man's in your locker room now? Okay, all right. So they're bringing a lot of bad vibes into this locker room no matter what. And he was asked if the White Sox or MLB asked him just to step away or have an administrative leave. No, he was not asked that. No discussion. That is ridiculous. That would be my first thing. Hey, can we have you just go away for a second while we get this investigation all set? We'll set you up in some Arizona Baseball field, we'll send our uh, pitching coach over every once in a while to see how you're doing, whatever. But today is not the day. The day is about celebration. It's about starting the baseball season, and it's about moving forward to a 2023 because the 2022 season sucked ass. Right. And now all the rest of the White Sox fans are like, what's different? And Mike We Cle- lost our best player. <laughs> now you're bringing this shitty guy in. And Mike Clevenger wasn't even on the team who didn't even have any part of the 2022 team is the main story of 2023. How does that make any sense? He has not played a single game, yet he is the main story for the White Sox. I, I don't get it. Um, they, they did this to themselves today. We were really unsure sitting here with Vinny yesterday before he we went on his plane, like what this was day was going to look like. I didn't think it was going to look like this. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, got to pay the bills. Um, I, I think we do have over 100 people still watching. So uh, if you are new, make sure you are hitting the subscribe button. We will be having pre and post games for you all throughout the season. Um, we'll be talking about the White Sox on a Hopefully daily without Mike Clevenger. basis. Um, we are at 30 likes as well. So if you are enjoying the coverage, um, uh, please do uh, hit the thumbs up. Uh, button. We, we really do appreciate it. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals to tickets, sports, concerts, and shows. I will tell you this right now. In 2023, I will only be buying my White Sox tickets through Game Time. Um, on opening day, I know there is a shot that Mike Clevenger would be the in-line starter. Uh, as Herb said, he thinks that Mike Clevenger would be pitching. You mean o- a home opening day? It would be Vince Velasquez started in 2022, yeah. and it would be Mike Clevenger in 2023. Um, if Mike Clevenger <laughs> is in a White Sox... Mm uniform pitching on opening day and in any day that he's in Chicago I will be buying tickets through game time and and booing him um just because I I I think that he is the epitome of like just the White Sox doing business the wrong way you want to be mired in mediocrity you pull shit like this um and that's why I won't buy tickets through you I don't want to give my cash to you I'll give it to game time. Uh, you won't find a better deal this season on White Sox tickets. It was created by the fans for the fans and it guarantees the lowest price. So if you love CHGO, then you love game time. The best way to support us is by buying your tickets to the link in the description. Join our 15 million people who have downloaded the game time app and score the best seats to all your favorite events. Two, um, you know, let's say the White Sox, you know, end up charging you 49 bucks for two tickets. Um, and then day of the game, you know, it's like 20 bucks to get in. Um, game time, 110% back of your money. Yeah, and we've done it. We've gone on late on a game time uh, app. And gone and got some forty-six dollar tickets for us three, Sean, myself, and Steven, to go to a game. The White Sox, I think, won that game. But yeah, it's your best option. You're late in the game. It's like uh, seven o'clock. You want to go to the game? Yeah, don't give Jerry your money. Game time will hook you up. Somebody already paid Jerry, so it would be you just giving that money to that person who paid Jerry, giving them money back and enjoying the game yourself. Um, the White Sox did put out a sights and sounds Ugh. of pitchers and catchers reporting. Um. Well, I'm just going through it right now. I see Lance Lynn. I see Michael Kopech. I see Dylan Cease. Um, I see Yasmani Grandal. And I don't see Mike Clevenger in a single shot. So, again, like... At least the social media manager knows not right, to put that but jerk like, on you there. Have, you, you have that sense to when you're creating a video that, hey, if this guy ends up being on administrative leave, we don't have to take down this video of pitchers and catchers reporting. That's why when you're looking for the video on like the White Sox press box, they're not posting the Clevenger sound because they don't want you to find it. They want him to speak to the media, to have that obligation met, and then you know they can just act like it never uh, uh, you know happened. And then they're, they're not going to include him at all in this because again, he might not be a part of the team. They have enough foresight for that their YouTube page for this, but not like just don't allow him to speak. Yeah, and don't, don't let. Rick Hans, because I said earlier, the plan, if they had people who were in charge of PR and had some power, they would say, Rick, all you're going to say today, the only thing you're going to say, and you're a lawyer, Rick, a classically trained lawyer. You should know this. Major League Baseball is running an investigation 
on Mike Clevenger. Major League Baseball has all the authority here. The White Sox do not have any authority here in this situation. We are not going to speak on the Mike Clevenger situation until it's resolved. If you have any baseball questions, I'll be willing to take them. That is all I'll say about Mike Clevenger. It's done. Not having Mike Clevenger also on. But, of course, you we root for a shitty team that does dumb things sometimes. But And all this being said, doesn't mean I'm down on the actual team winning. It just means the team and how they operate, it's just so frustratingly bad that a person who's a layperson like myself would do so much better. And I know they're going to be watching. I know they're going to be pissed at me saying this. And that's the problem. They're pissed at me for saying shit instead of the person that is a, accused of domestic violence. Pissed at me and other people who say shit about the White Sox. Just the... Just the Worrying about the wrong stuff all the damn time. Instead of the product in the field. Instead of scouting the players to make the major league team. Instead of having a fifth starter that may be, you know, be good. Instead of investing in analytic department fully. Instead of having a developmental staff if you're not going to spend a lot of money. They're worried about people talking badly about the White Sox and punishing them that way. Hey, uh, again... Look at background checks and just look at the White Sox recent history. Wes Helms, why is he not the manager of Charlotte anymore? Omar Vizquel, why is he not a part of Thank the you. organization anymore? Brian Ball, is there not an open investigation into Rick Hahn right now for the uh, former athletic trainer? I'm just saying, the, like, there's a lot right now with the White Sox, and Rick Hahn could go back to all the way to 2005, but, buddy, we're in the future. We're in the present. Sorry, we're in the present right now. We're not talking about 2005. That's great that A.J. Pruszynski and Bobby Jenks, whatever, worked out. Lately, your house has been a fucking mess. Not, I, we haven't done that. There's still I a didn't person, sign Mike Clevenger. There's still a person that was credibly accused of rape on their staff. Yes. Daryl Boston. It and tells you all you need to know. And he survived four managers. Yeah, and he's not good at his job. That's the thing. <laughs> like the off-field, outfield defense is shit. It's terrible. And what does a first base coach do? Nothing. Get back. Go to second. That's it. And you couldn't even do that right. We got the 8-5 uh, triple play. The only one in history. Daryl Boston's fault. And the runner's fault, too. But it just continues. It just continues. You're going to be a bad team. Be at least a, a credible team. Be at least a, a team you can be proud to be a fan of. Well, right. And, and this is supposed to be the World Series window. I can tell you right now that on February 15th, 2023, four years into the White Sox World Series window, I have zero faith that this team will win the World Series. Pakoda has a 1% chance for the White Sox to win the World Series in 2023. They signed Yasmani Grandal to have this window open, and this window has been dog shit. They have, it was the COVID year. Then they hired Tony La Russa, who had multiple DUIs. Um, and then, you know, here we go with the Mike Clevenger stuff. That's the, the start of the 2023 spring training. And they you hired to, that guy knowing he had those DUIs. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, as I said, if they thought that Tony La Russa is just such a difference maker and they looked past the DUIs, which I wouldn't have, that tells me poor judgment. And also, I've said this on this uh, show before, Tony's DUIs, and he's been caught twice. I'm not. Sh I'm. Not, I'm pretty sure that he's done it multiple times. He's only been caught twice. Are are a example of his results prove the process correct? I'm drunk. I'm gonna drive my car. And if I make it home, man, positive experience. Instead of, I don't want to drive home because the me being drunk and impaired would maybe cause other people and myself harm. So I will not. Think about the positive result of getting home. I will think of, hey, there's an Uber. Let me get that way home. So that, I think, also proved Tony's you know, managing style. If the results are good, he was happy, as Vinny always said. If the results are bad, he was sad, which is a terrible way to look at a baseball game. Sometimes you lose games because you're going to lose games. But if you played right, you can think, look at that loss and say, that team was better than us today. I think that that drove Tony's... Decision making, hey, let's win today's game no matter what. And I think they're doing it again. If the results are good, hey, we signed this Bobby Jenks and or A.J. Brzezinski, and look what happened, 2005. That's why we're taking this calculated risk with Mike Clevenger. Look what happened, 2013, uh, 2023. Maybe he'll win a, we'll win a World Series again. They won't. They probably won't even win the uh, AL Central, which they're like 
predicted to be third in the division with the Cleveland Guardians and the Minnesota Twins. Imagine that. We're still talking about the Cleveland Guardians and the Minnesota right. Twins. Well, and two, like, again. Battling like, those bums. It's, it's the White Sox just trying to find any edge. You know, they have a connection to a Hall of Fame manager. It doesn't matter that he's 76 years old and has two DUIs. You know, he's a Hall of Fame manager, and we can spend $5 million on him rather than $300 million on Manny Machado. Um, you know, we can spend $12 million on Mike Clevenger, and maybe he'd be as good as Carlos Rodon rather than spending the $175 million or even the, you know, $50 million last year to keep Carlos Rodon. It's just, it's, it's bad decision making and it's it's just a guy that shouldn't be having that job for 10 years i mean you have you have two playoff appearances and at like you said it proves you're being cheap costing you more than the actual money you're spending the white Sox with their offseason i'm sure have cost themselves money with fans we've seen people in the chat right now i'm not going to the game who's your daddy lives in indiana he said i have no trips planned all the people we've told like go to game time and get your money that way no one's going to be enthusiastic about going to Sox Park. I can guarantee you that that opening day, whenever cold April day when they're facing the San Francisco Giants, it's going to not be full, filled up because fans are disappointed. And that's why signing players like Clevenger, because he's cheap and maybe he can hit the top of the uh, rotation uh, track that he was on when he was in Cleveland. Right. That's what they're looking for. Instead of players that have shown you they're good and they cost a little bit more money, but you got to spend money to make money. Scared money don't make none, and that's what the White Sox are. Scared money, trying to spin under the radar and trying to get some gem for a little money. And Pennywise and Palm Foolish. Thank you, you Tommy. Uh, that's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him on Twitter, at Wall 23 Vinny Duber will be joining us tomorrow. He's still busy in Arizona. He's meeting Pedro Grafal, Lance Lynn. Um, he's that's a big-time day for the spring training. Very big. Down there. Hit the ground running down in AZ. But the so, White Sox uh, like, oh, fuck all that. <laughs> Let's give you Mike Clevenger. Enjoy. <laughs> Vinny will be joining us uh, tomorrow. Make sure to follow him at Vinny Duber. I'm not sure if he's going to try to write a piece tonight, but uh, just keep your eyes out on his Twitter page. He might be releasing Can something. I ask you a question? Do you think we're going to talk about Mike Clevenger tomorrow? We're talking about him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, look. I, I, it, it, this, look what you did, White Sox. The first question I will ask Vinny is about Mike Clevenger tomorrow. Look what you did, White Sox. Mike, Mike Clevenger, at, or Vinny, we cut it off right before, and thank you to Vinny for sending in the audio and video for Clevenger and uh, Han. But uh, right before we cut it off, the Clevenger thing, he asked Clevenger, like, you know, what's the vibe with your teammates and, and with, you know, around spring training? And I think that's just a better question to ask Vinny now, just because, you know, 24 hours after you've talked to everybody, What's the vibe? Uh, you know, it's it's way too early to tell with with Mike Clevenger and and the vibe. So uh, we'll we'll talk to Vinny tomorrow and get a vibe check from spring training uh, at 4 p.m. Thank you everybody for tuning in to the CHGO Live White Sox podcast. We appreciate uh, everybody dealing with the 45 minute delay for us going live. We just wanted to make sure we had that video and audio for for you. Uh, again, make sure you hit the like button on your way out. And thank you very much for hanging out with us in the chat. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Thank you to Stephen Nicholas for producing the show, and we will. We'll talk to you tomorrow.